Hello and welcome back to the Knowledge Catalog's Earth and Space Science 9 series. This is going to be the 15th session for the series, so I hope that uh, you are still with me. Do not worry, this is going to be the last episode in this series. Okay, it's going to be comprised of the following parts. The first part is activity number 4, which is different star patterns through the year. And then the second part is a discussion about how early people used the constellations. And then the last part is a capping, because it's going to be the summative assessment comprised of multiple choices. If you want to follow through with your learner's module, you can open them in Unit 3, Module 3, pages 14 to 22. Also, uh, we are going to finish this uh, quarter, actually, yeah, this quarter, uh, with uh, the 10th learning competency, which is showing which constellations may be observed at different times of the year using some models. And so I hope that you're ready. Let's begin with the first part, activity number four. The different star patterns through the year, activity number four, has the following objective. The first objective is, uh, the only objective that we have for this activity is explain why some constellations are not seen at certain months. For your materials, you will be needing your science notebook or a sheet of paper and then a pencil or any other writing instrument. So first is you have to observe and analyze the following photographs. This is a photo of the sky in Angela City. March 30, 2020, 8.01 p.m. The application I used to capture this image is Stellarium. So it is this, um, what should I call that? It is this uh, star mapping, uh, star mapping application, which is uh, readily available for iOS, for Linux, for uh, Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. And I got these 64-bit. And then uh, set in location yet to Angela City, Earth, right here, as you can see here, Earth, Angela City. And then uh, yung time naman niya, I set it to 20.01, which I think, yeah, is um, 8.01 p.m. And then it's uh, March 30, 2020. So I would like you to observe and analyze the following um, map of the sky, star map of the sky. The second uh, photo is the sky in Angela City in June 2020. So uh, take note that this is still facing north. And then the star map in the same uh, location, September 30, 2020. And then, okay, star map of the sky, same location, December 30, 2020. Okay. If you want to pause this video, you can do that. If you want to go uh, back to the previous photos, you can also do that. You can just uh, rewind. Okay, so for the guide questions, you have the following. First question, compare the photographs. What did you notice? For the second question, the second and the last question, why are some stars visible in March but are not visible in September? Finalize your answers. If you are not done answering yet, you can pause this video. But you're, if you're through, let us now discuss the answers, the correct answers to those questions. The first, uh, the answer to the first question is that different patterns are formed in different months. So there are different constellations present above a particular area for different months. And then for the second question, the answer is this is due to the Earth's revolution. Remember, when we say revolution, we are referring to the movement of the planet, planet Earth, around the sun. Because we, when we say rotation, we mean the rotation of the planet in its axis, with respect to its axis. And we're through with activity number four, different star, star patterns through the year. 
Uh, kindly report your score on the upper right-hand corner of your paper and make sure that it will stay in your science notebook until I am going. I can check them. Okay? Okay. For the second part of this session, we have the following. It's a discussion about how early people used the constellations. What you see here right now is an artist's impression of Orion or Orion. Pero I think it's pronounced as Orion. Uh, so um, while constellations were associated usually with religion, they also have practical uses. Okay, meron silang mga, say, mga silbe na aside pa sa, re sa religion, okay? they have practical uses. Before the calendars, people had no way of determining when to sow or harvest except by looking at these patterns in the sky. So nung wala pa tayong mga kalendaryo, remember di ba? Ang kalendaryo na invento din siya, okay? So hindi siya, hindi na natin, hindi natin dinatnan yan, okay? Inimbento natin yan. Okay, nung wala pang nakaka-invento ng kalendaryo, the only way for people to know kung pa kailan sila magsusow or mag-harvest is by just observing the sky. Okay, bakit importante ting malaman nila? Kasi syempre, dati, um, ang pag-produce ng pagkain, it is really, it is done by the community. Okay, so dati, hindi naman, hindi naman lahat binibili. Dati talaga, there are groups of people who are farming, who are tilling the land. Ayun. So, syempre, uh, for, for them to be able to, ano, to maximize their harvest, at para malaman din nila kung kailan yung best time para magtanim, kailangan meron sa sinas some sort of an indication. And what better uh, indication is there than the stars? Diba? Ayun. So yeah, ancient people, they developed a way to remember the patterns by giving these patterns names and stories. Oh, yan, uh, ba, parang tayo lang, no? Oo, kapag tayo, nagre-review tayo, or kapag gusto nating matatandaan ang isang, uh, ang isang series ng mga facts, di ba, usually, ginagamitan natin sila ng acronym, ginagamitan natin sila ng location. Yung ibang mga nagre-review para sa mga licensure examination na ginagawa nila para matandaan nila ang napakaraming mga formula Nilalagay pa talaga nila, sinusulat nila sa, sa papel, tapos nilalagay nila sa likod ng, na, ano, sa likod ng mga pintu, eh, ng mga pinto. Ayun, no, kaya pinupost nila sa isang specific location sa loob ng room nila. Tawag yata doon, low-key low or low-key system. Oo, so ganun sila mag-review. Hindi nagawa nila para matanda nila yung formula, ang isang fact, or any series of ano, if information na medyo tricky kung i-memorize. Nilalagay nila sa isang specific part of the of the bahay <laughs> ng, ng kanilang house. For example, uh, yun, yun nga, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung about sa mga formula. Ngayon, ancient people, they also did that. Para mas matandaan nila yung mga patterns na to, uh, they gave them names and they also gave them some stories. Okay? For instance, in northern in the northern hemisphere, yung constellation na Orion, ini-indicate niya yung coming of cold season. Itong si Orion, itong soldier na to, kapag lumitaw na siya sa horizon ng ano, sa gabi, yan, ibig sabihin nun, papalapit na ang cold season. Yun. So, these constellations, they made it easier for, for these people, for the ancient people, to recognize and interpret the patterns in the sky. And so, in the Philippines naman, ang, ang ano, isa sa mga, isa sa mga ano, uh, mababasa natin regarding this, is yung paggamit ng ano ng ilang mga naging unang Pilipino sa constellation na Gemini, yung Kambal. Ikaw ang zodiac sign mo. Oh, ginagamit ano yan kasi, 'di ba? Zodiac sign kasi yan ang Gemini. It's the twins. Okay, ang Gemini is seen in the in the Philippines during the months of April and May. Ang mga magsasaka, ininterpret nila yung appearance ng Gemini as the end of the planting season. And it also signifies Rich harvest. Okay, kapag nandiyan ang Gemini, ending na dapat, dapat patapos na ang pagpaplant. Tapos, it also signifies isang mayaman na ani. Ang mga, ang mga kababayan naman natin, ang mga kapatid naman natin, ang mga matiglasu manobo, na, ta, na mga taga-bukid noon, they used also the stars and constellations in relation to their agriculture. So, nakikita mo dito sa ating uh, table dito, ang local name at saka yung mga western equivalent ng mga constellations at kung kailan sila nag appear sa bukid nun, at kung ano yung related agricultural activity na naka-attach sa kanila. O halimbawa, kapag lumitaw na ang ano ang balatik, 
which is also known as Orion's Belt or yung mismong body ni Orion sa February or sa Pebrero, indication yun na dapat mag-start ng magtanim. Okay? And then dapat may set na yung mga traps, yung mga ano, patibong. Okay? Para ma-protect ang mga crops mula sa mga animals, yung mga uh, nag-graze. Na, Siyempre, ayaw nilang mag-graze yung mga pinilan nila. Sayang naman kasi. And tapos kapag lumitaw naman ang lepu sa late May o yung bandang huli na ng Mayo, uh, which is equivalent to Aquila, Aquila is yung agila ni Zeus. Yung taga, ano, taga-retrieve ng lightning bolt ni Zeus kapag tinatro niya. Aquila yung pangalan ng eagle na yun. Sa Pilipinas, ang tawag doon is Lepu. Okay, dumitaw siya every late of May. Tapos indication yun na dapat nang i-clean or i-clear yung mga fields while waiting for harvest time. So ganyan ang ginawa ng mga kababayan natin and I'm sure na marami pa tayong ibang mga bababasa tungkol sa iba't iba pang mga grupo ng mga Pilipino na meron din pagpapakulugan. Sa resil ng kanya-kanya nilang pagpapakulugan, kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng pag-appear ng mga iba't ibang mga constellations sa ating night sky. At dyan nagtatapos ang ating discussion about how early people used the constellations. And I hope na meron kayong natutunan tungkol sa paggamit ng mga at, ng ating mga nino and even actually yung mga kababayan natin ngayon sa mga constellations, yung mga patterns sa sky. And for the meantime, we need to do the following, a summative assessment which is comprised of multiple choices. So I hope that you ready, you prepare, your, you have prepared your science notebook or a sheet of paper, your pencil or any other writing instrument because this is question number one. Okay, so which statement best explains why Cygnus is visible to an observer in Manila in September but not in March? Is it A, Earth spins on its axis? B, Earth is orbits Earth orbits the Sun? C, Cygnus spins on its axis? Or is it D, Cygnus orbits the Earth? Question number two. Which among the following motion is res mainly responsible for the change in the position of Pisces throughout through the night? Pisces is a constellation. Remember, uh, it is a zodiac sign as well. It's the fish. Uh, so A, revolution of Earth around the sun. B, rotation of Earth on its axis. C, revolution of Pisces around the sun. Or is it D, rotation of Pisces on its axis? Question number three, it may almost be near impossible to count how many shining dots you see in a clear night sky because our eyes do not catch all forms of light. But there is an estimate of how many stars in total are found in our universe, in our vast universe. So which among the following is the closest estimate? A, 100 billion stars. B, 200 billion stars. C, 300 billion stars. D, 400 billion stars. Question number four. Despite the fact that other stars such as Sirius, Rigel, and Spica are more massive than the sun, the sun still appears as the brightest star in the Earth's sky. The heat of the sun is more felt than any of the other more massive stars. Which among the following refers to the degree of brightness a star has as compared to the brightness of the sun? A. Mass B. Diameter C. Magnitude D. Scalar Finalize your answers! You only have four items to answer, so I hope that you are through answering them. If you're through, let us now check your work. Okay, for question number one, the answer is Earth is orbiting the sun. Kaya nakikita natin minsan ang Cygnus kapag September, kapag September, tapos nawawala siya bigla kapag March. Mapapansin na natin, wala siya pag March. <laughs> Ayan, task number two, uh, rotation of the Earth on its axis. Kasi pinag-uusapan lang dito yung gabi. So yung Pisces, dilitaw siya kapag gabi, tapo, ay, kapag mag-start na yung gabi, tapos bigla siyang makawala, mag-move siya. Question number three, the answer is B, 200 billion stars. No, dami, no? Napakadami niyan. And then, question number four, the answer is magnitude. O, ilan yung nakuha mong tabang sagot? 
Okay, I would like you to report your score on the upper right-hand corner of your uh, paper. And then if you're using your science notebooks, report, report it through the upper right-hand corner of your paper too. Okay, so uh, keep them until I check them. Okay, so this is uh, Earth and Space Science 9 Session 15. And congratulations, you are done with the third quarter. Palakbara naman dyan. Inabot mo to. Okay, so uh, we are also through with activity number four, different star patterns through the year. And then the discussion about how early people used the constellations. And then the last part, a summative assessment comprised of four items, multiple choices each. You are also through... Uh, with this learning competency, show which constellations may be observed at different times of the year using models. This has been Sir CJ, and I hope that I will be seeing you in the next video lesson in physics.